Uh, companies face more political interference this year after the election of Donald Trump and the Brexit vote. That's the key finding of the annual antitrust report published today by Freshfields, one of the world's leading law firms. It argues there is a growing risk of political intervention in cross-border deals and potentially a more protectionist approach to global trade in goods and services. Oh, Deirdre Trapp is a partner in Freshfields' antitrust competition and trade practice. So why do you have these concerns? Well, we've produced this uh, survey for a number of years, Ian, and in past years, uh, our themes were around convergence, cooperation, collaboration amongst uh, antitrust agencies. There are 140 of those now worldwide. Um, but this year we do see a change uh, post-Brexit and with the election of President, uh, President-elect Trump, um, given the signals that he's been sending. Obviously, uh, your earlier commentators were speaking about his, uh, his very interesting uh, remarks over the weekend. And I think that really plays up the sorts of things that are of interest to us. So as a businessman, we would expect uh, Donald Trump to be actually quite um, uh, pro-business and consolidation and transaction and so forth. But clearly, uh, he's got some hot spots. And And which are they? Well, they're very interesting, aren't they? I mean, we've heard a number of times, I think, about defence procurement, for instance. He's clearly got a thing about about Air Force One and how much that costs the Americans. But I think it's slightly wider than that. You know, during the election process, he uh, was talking about the Time Warner AT&T deal. So we can, I think, anticipate concerns in the media area. Don't the drug makers either much, does he? No. And, And auto. I think the auto industry um, is very interesting because, of course, that also plays into trade in a big way. His comments that, you know, 35 percent tariff on on cars coming into the states that weren't made there, I think, are are quite a a strong signal of the sorts of things that are going to be of interest to him. What about foreign investors investing into the United States? I mean, Britain is the largest overseas investor in the US. Do you think UK companies will face more regulatory scrutiny? Well, potentially, but I doubt, actually, that the UK UK companies are the ones really in the line of fire. In the US, they have a system under the control of a Committee on Foreign Investment in the US, or CFIUS, as it's known. And they really look at uh, transactions that give rise to national security concerns. And um, we've already seen quite a change of attitude, particularly around Chinese investment and concerns about widening up those controls um, to to take in um, more sorts of transactions than just national security. Because, again, if you go back to President-elect Trump's interview yesterday, uh, he's really big on reciprocity. And if a deal can't be done by a U.S. company in China, you might think he's not going to allow the Chinese to do that deal here in, uh, here in the States. And, of course, the flip side of that, I guess, is that there's a danger of retaliatory action. I mean, we've seen, for example, state aid cases brought by the EU against the likes of Apple and Amazon. Is it possible that Trump might fire with fire if we get more of those? Well, if he's, if he's sincere about imposing 35 per cent uh, tariffs on uh, on the car industry, importing German cars into into the States, then we're going to be looking for some fireworks, I would have thought. And um, briefly, you mentioned China there. How worried are you about protectionism between the US and China? Well, that treaty is, is up for grabs. Clearly, President Trump had uh, no great fondness for it during the election period. Uh, and the consequences between of China, Sino-American relationships, I think, are going to take quite some time to unwind.